This is Season 5 of Flute Unscripted. Hi, I'm your host, Katie Massad, and I sit down with a new artist every week and share their stories with you. This podcast is brought to you by Flute Center of New York, the marketplace for flutes. Join us, subscribe, rate, and review us. Use this podcast promo code LISTEN for some special perks. Get $50 off any flute or accessory purchase of $4.99 or more, and 10% off any sheet music order, including free shipping on all orders over $50. Once again, that's code LISTEN. Alison Fierce is a newly appointed associate principal flute of the New York Philharmonic. Before landing her dream job, Alison completed her bachelor's at Carnegie Mellon University with Alberto Almarza. The two stay in touch, and Alberto was a sounding board and huge support for Alison as she navigated the audition circuit and honed her skills. She went on to start a master's at Manhattan School of Music in the orchestral performance program. Alison suspended her studies to play second flute with the Rochester Philharmonic and ultimately gave up her spot as a student of Robert Langevin's at MSM to then become his colleague in the Phil. We chatted about her past audition failures, her New York Phil audition experience, and the Haynes Amadeus alto flute that helped her land the job. Allison, thank you for coming today, and big congrats to you on your recent win in the New York Phil. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Do you still feel like you're pinching yourself a little bit? It's very fresh. It's very new. Yeah, every single morning I feel like I'm pinching myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Can you share a little bit with me and with our listeners about the audition process? Um, since it just happened, I'm sure this is a good time to go over it. it it's in your mind. Um, the experience is still very new. I'm really curious about, first of all, the pacing, because um, we had a lot of people come in here to the store that were taking the audition. We had a lot of, a lot of friends in the store and just lots of clients that were popping in um, that the, during the first week. Um, and I know that it was a long process where you could record um, a first right. round yeah. or you could show up. And then there were multiple rounds over a very long period of time. So can right. you talk a little bit about your personal experience? Sure, sure. So personally, I did a live preliminary round and... Um, there was some amount of time, I'm not, I don't remember exactly, a few weeks or so between the prelims and the semifinals and finals. Um, the semifinals and finals were on the same weekend. Um, but yeah, it was a little odd, like not having it all like condensed yeah, in yeah. just a few days. So, um, and like at the time I was preparing for other auditions as well. So it was definitely something like a little bit of a hurdle like I had to be really organized with my preparation for everything to keep everything like really fresh over a long amount sure. of time yeah do you feel like you're one of those people or one of those flutists that can easily handle lots of auditions at the same time or do you feel like you do better when it's you know one big one coming up that you can really just put everything into because I know some people kind of thrive when it's a little hectic and yeah they feel sure, like they're sure. juggling lots of different things I I suppose I might be one of those yeah. people. I mean, it's, it's super stressful, of course, yeah, obviously, yeah. but I think I generally do better like when I'm under pressure, and I think I spend my time wisely. Like mm-hmm. if I have a lot going on at right. the time, like I'm more productive. Yeah, you're not so, wasting time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. Exactly. And the decision to record versus do the the live round. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your reasoning behind that? Um, I just, I wanted an opportunity to like play in the hall, you know, and just be in that scenario. And I thought, you know, I should just do it for the prelim round because I potentially would have to do it for the other two anyway. So I'm like, so I'll just, you know, get over that (laughs) initially, you know, (laughs) sure. Um, and at the time that you were prepping, you were in the Rochester film, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. so you're also keeping busy with all of your rehearsals and performances there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that also helps because you're in your routine and you have this gig that you have to keep up with? Yeah, a big part of my preparation, well, for me in general, I think that 
if I have a set schedule, then it's really easy for me to like schedule my practice time and like work my day around that. But if I'm free for the whole day, like I will not get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. Like I won't start practicing until like the afternoon yeah. and like the time just goes by so quickly. Sure. You know I mean? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny because Mindy um, was here, Mindy Kaufman, uh, about a month ago and I was yeah. chatting with her about that and she's kind of the same. She's the same. to get yeah. started mm-hmm. right in the morning. Otherwise, yeah. like things just happen and then it's yeah. the afternoon and then it's dinner time <laughs> and it's like cramming in the end. Totally. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you play a lot of alto flute before the audition, and was this kind of your like first foray into like prepping it for for audition? Sure. Purposes? I mean, I love alto flute. I think that it comes very natural to me, just with like how like I am as a player on flute. Like the um, my strengths translate really easily oh, to alto flute. Um, in a sense where like I really like like my low register, yeah. like I have like a like big sound, you know, so it just it goes really well onto sure. the other instrument. Um, and I had a few other commitments on alto flute, like in RPO, and then I was doing a few other auditions that I had to play alto on. So I came to Flute Center last year in the winter time, and I knew about like the renting process, and I had thought about it, and I wasn't really in the market to buy one, so I was just trying them for fun. And then I ended up playing this Haynes Amadeus alto flute, and I just knew, like, immediately. I think I only played it for, like, 15 minutes. Like, it was, like, that clear that yeah. this was just the instrument yeah. that I should get. Yeah. Well, that's great that it worked out at that yeah, time. Like, you yeah. had so many different engagements where you needed it, too. Absolutely, so yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess that does make sense. For sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about the logistics of practicing it? Uh, incorporating into your regular practice routine because mm. it's do you have a straight head joint or a I do curve? yeah, yeah. Mm. do you feel like you get tired after a while or um, not too much fatigue maybe a little I don't I mean when I was practicing for these auditions there were so so many excerpts and like I was playing piccolo excerpts too yeah and I ended up like setting a timer for each excerpt so I wouldn't really play because I had to cover so much ground sure. so quickly so I wasn't really playing it for really lengthy like amounts of time you yeah. know what I mean so yeah just being super super organized with it so. yeah like chunking almost <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um you went on tour with the Phil too over the summer mm-hmm. was this your trial period and can you share a little bit about that experience with sure the sure it wasn't technically my trial period so after I had won the audition back in the spring they invited me to play principal on Beethoven Eroica. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that, that <laughs> week was my trial period. Yap was conducting, and Is at the... Is nerve-wracking? I can imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was such an amazing experience, sure. but of course, like, it's super nerve-wracking because, yeah. you know, there's a decision, like, wavering in the yeah. air, so... And at the end of the week, I was offered the position officially, which was very happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was very happy. Um, so then I, I started officially in September, but, um, they asked me to come along as a sub on the tours over the summer. So yeah, it was so, so much fun. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I saw some photos that they posted that other people posted you yourself. Um, mm-hmm. it looks beautiful. It looks yeah. Like a ton yeah. Of fun. I haven't really traveled too much in my life and I'm really excited to be able to. Well, now you are going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're going to get a lot in. Uh, what was your prep like for for that Eroica week? Did you play anything else on the program? or was No, I just played, just played yeah. Eroica. Um, I practiced a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot with recordings because I really wanted to like imitate like me being in like the orchestral environment yeah. because I like had played the excerpt obviously before and like had looked through the part but really wanted to be super super prepared like from the first rehearsal on you know yeah so score studying things absolutely like that. Yeah. 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 every yeah. everything I could do to prepare for that week yeah, yeah. Whew. I yeah. Just, it makes me like start to get <laughs> yeah, nervous thinking about it yeah. <laughs> I'm um, looking back on all your auditions in general because you've mm. been very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that there's a common thread throughout when you've done really well on that day or when you've had like a really killer day and you've nailed all of your excerpts? Or do you think that it's just luck and that your auditions are all really different and just happens to be who's on the panel? And sure, who sure. Playing? I think, I mean, there's definitely some similarities and differences. Um, for me personally, like I... I'm grateful like I haven't taken too many auditions in my musical life. I took one before Rochester and then two in between Rochester and New York. Um, And I think that my preparation has always been kind of the same. Like it kind of like evolved and refined, you know, the more auditions I took. But um, 
I mean, they're so different jobs. Like, every audition is, like, very, very different. They're yeah. all unique. Um, and they're for different positions and, yeah. like, different area different instruments. Yeah, sometimes for sure, like piccolo, yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest difference for me was, like, my mindset. My mindset really changed a lot this past year. Like, I know it's, like, not really a lot of months in between these auditions. Yeah. But, yeah, and I mean... Um, this past year has been such a whirlwind. Last year, I graduated in 2018 from Carnegie Mellon, and I applied to grad school immediately. I had the amazing opportunity to study with Robert, and that yeah. was absolutely amazing. But with those auditions, like I was only accepted to one school, and I kind of it hit me hard. I was like, I mean, it was a great school, obviously, but I was like, am I doing something wrong? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, and then. At that point, like, when I got there, I just hit the ground running. I was like, I want to win a job. Like, I wanted to be taking these auditions. I had never taken one until, like, last fall was my first one. Oh, wow. Um, and so that was, like, kind of my mindset going into RPO. So I think I was very lucky to have gotten that opportunity. Um, and then after that, I was taking these other auditions, and I kind of had the same mindset. I was like, you know... I practice a lot, like I know, like I play how I want to play, like I know, like it's good, you know? And I went into these other auditions after RPO and I wasn't advancing, you know? (laughs) And it happens, like everything is so subjective. We're in such a subjective career. And I I remember just feeling so defeated and frustrated. (laughs) I was like, I should be, you know, I should be doing well. Like I know I'm really happy with how I'm playing. I called my professor. He's been such a help through this whole process. He, I mean, he was my undergrad teacher, so he's, you know, such a big part of my life still. Like, we talk very frequently. Um, And I remember I called him after this one audition that I thought I was going to do really well in. I was like, look, like, the comments I'm getting back are just, like, good, you know, nothing too constructive. Like, I don't know, like, what is going to, like, push me over the edge. And he was like, Allison you're an amazing player. Like, I think you just have to wait for the right panel. Like, just keep doing these opportunities. And that's when I had this realization that, you know, auditions aren't really tests. I think I thought a lot about it being kind of like a competition. And, like, if you don't advance, then, like, something's wrong, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. But there's so many other factors that are at play, and there's so many, like, different stylistic like preferences and there's so many things that you don't know behind the screen it's true yeah and so going into this new york audition i like i just had these two auditions where i didn't do as well as i wanted to and i was like you know like i need something has to change right like i obviously want to do well in this audition and my like big realization i was like you know auditions aren't really like an opportunity for you, the player, to impress the orchestra. It's an opportunity for the orchestra to see the value in you as a player. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just went in to the audition. That was kind of like my mantra. I was just like, it's their opportunity to listen to me, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. And not in like a conceited way at all. Right. It's just like I've developed as, you know, the musician that I am. Mm-hmm. And if they, like, are looking for someone that sounds like me and they appreciate, like, what I do with these excerpts, then then it's a good fit, you know? Because exactly. you don't want to be in an orchestra where you're changing how you play for the audition and then you get in the orchestra and then it doesn't and work. And it's not know? a good match. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that was a really big difference and I never thought for one second with this audition, like, I never thought, like, oh, I really want to win this, you know? Like, not yeah. until the super final round that was the first thought I had I was like oh my gosh like mm-hmm. I can actually like this might happen <laughs> <laughs> the reality yeah, sets in yeah. like this is a thing mm-hmm. and I think that's um good advice too because it's it it is a change of the mindset it's not like you changed your playing or exactly, your approach to yeah, practicing yeah. it's you just changed how you thought about the whole mm-hmm. process which and is I think I piece. think it makes the process more a lot more genuine too you know yeah like it's just it shouldn't be this scary process, you know? It's just artists yeah. coming together and yeah. just, you know, sharing our work. So. Yeah, once you can wrap your head around that, yeah. it's hard to get there for it's a little really while. It's really hard to get there. I mean, it takes it takes failure to get yeah. there, honestly. So. Yeah. Allison's change of mindset has clearly paid off. She was determined and focused on winning an orchestra job, and she succeeded. 
Now she finds inspiration in her colleagues playing and in the new city she gets to call home. Allison is excited to plant some roots here in New York City and explore what other performance opportunities come her way, branching out into more solo engagements and becoming involved in chamber music. I want to talk a little bit more about um, your start on the flute and kind of the family and background that you came from because sure. um, they're not very musical so mm-hmm. you said you know they they didn't yeah, really put a lot of pressure on you family, yeah. like, no music <laughs> yeah. um, which is probably kind of nice um you didn't really start to take it seriously until you got to to eighth grade mm-hmm. um you had a lot of encouragement it seems like but not a lot of pressure to be successful do you feel like that helped you keep the joy of playing alive and not burn out like a lot of young players sure sure so my mom is not musical at all. Like she really has <laughs> no like musical no bone in her idea yeah. what's going on. Like I love her dearly. <laughs> she tries really hard to understand like the world that I'm in. Yeah. But like I just I started on the flute in fifth grade. Like whenever one else like chose yeah. their instruments, like it was just like what you did. You know, it wasn't like a conscious decision. Like my mom, like I never had like piano lessons when I was three. You know, yeah. like it never happened that way, and. I mean, I'm so, like, eternally grateful that she has been supportive since day one and, like, had never questioned, like, when I told her that I wanted to go into music, she was just like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't face her. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I know, like, some people, like, it's a scary thing, I think, but, like, if you're really passionate about it, then, you know, you should pursue what you're passionate about. Um, But, yeah, so I didn't, I don't think I really had a concept of, like, what my level was, you know, because I was just, like, playing in my school, and I did, like, regional, like, orchestras and stuff like that. My school didn't even have an orchestra, so the first time I really played an orchestra was, like, a junior in high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Um, I never, I knew anything about, you know, like, competitions or master classes or pre-college. Like, I had none of this training, and I was really lucky to have a really great teacher throughout my, like, formative years. Ina Leone is her name. Um, and she really pushed me really hard, but I didn't realize my level, like, until I was accepted at, to see, like, at Carnegie Mellon. Oh, wow. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, the schools that I applied to for undergrad were, like, very, like, ranged. Like, I had no, no concept, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really, really grateful that Alberto saw, you know, the potential in me and accepted me. And wow. Yeah. It That's, was such yeah. a great fit of a school. You know, I really appreciate and look at my time at CMU very fondly. So then after Carnegie Mellon, then you went on to get a master's in the orchestral performance program at MSM, right? With I, I started my master's. You yeah. started, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you stopped for RPO? I did. So I took a leave of absence when I won the position in RPO. And then after I passed my trial here in New York, I withdrew from the Yeah. Is yeah. <laughs> that a little bittersweet? Because it's I mean, that's what the program's for, right, is to win a job, so it's great, Um, but it's probably hard. You seem like a goal-oriented person Mm -hmm. that likes to get the job done. It's probably hard to leave something unfinished like that. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I was only there for about two months or so, so I mean, I'm still debating if if I want to pursue, you know, a master's at this point, but... It would be hard to do both of them. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, would you go back to that program in particular, or you maybe? Want to go yeah, back I really, I haven't given it much, too much thought yeah, yet. But sure, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about that particular program drew you in? You were saying you just wanted to win a job, and you were kind of gun ho set on that. Sure. I mean, I, I've always like wanted to play in an orchestra. That was always my goal, um, and. I always wanted to study with Robert, like he's, you know, yeah. the person yeah. to study with. <laughs> and I had a trialism with him and I really liked how like he taught as a teacher and I think that his um his way of teaching was what I needed at the time. Like he was he's very different from Alberto mm-hmm. and I really like that I got like kind of like both sides of the coin and yeah. I just yeah really you- helped me a lot. So and then that program I just really wanted to study with him. So do you think that that's important, kind of having different yeah, teachers guess, and that absolutely. they kind of come at you at different points in your, mm. your career, too? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's important to, like, look for, like, really, like, vocalize, like, what you're looking for mm. in a teacher, you know, and to, I don't know, like, just know what you need and know what yeah. you want, yeah. yeah. So it really shows, like, that 
you're really in tune with how you're playing and like what your skills are and like what you're not and super your skilled at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then after studying with him, even just for, you know, that short mm-hmm. amount of time I and then so getting the much job. Yeah. Such a short amount of time. I'm sure. <laughs> um, did it feel like, is it still maybe feel a little bit weird to do that switch from once being a people to now being a colleague? Right. Yeah. I mean, definitely different yeah I mean I don't think a lot of people can say that they now are colleagues with their like former teacher right now it's special (laughs) yeah yeah um I even when I was an RPO like I still took some lessons with him here and there just to you know keep my skills up and like get some refreshers yeah I don't think no one ever knows everything all the time I think everyone is our students you know yeah forever (laughs) yeah (laughs) but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so, I, I admire his playing so much. I admire everyone's playing in the orchestra, really, and I just am so lucky to be surrounded by that every day. It's very inspiring to be surrounded by such a high caliber of musicians, and yeah. And you are one of them, you know, and you're in with the section. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. You've been in a lot of different cities and moved around uh, for school and work. I mean, so you don't mm. travel too much for fun, right, but yeah. but school and work have kept you um, all around the Very country. Busy, yeah. <laughs> um, are you excited now? This is kind of in addition to a big career change. It's mm. a big life change. I mean, you're right, yeah. in the fill. This is a full-time job. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be here in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, how does that sit with you? Is it like really exciting to have finally maybe some roots and you're going to be here? Or is it a little like, yeah. oh, I'm used to I moving around. I'm so happy. I don't want to move anymore. <laughs> 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 I mean, just like in the past like year and a half, I, you know, finished school in Pittsburgh and then Went, did my summer in Aspen, yeah. moved here for school, but then moved to Rochester, yeah. now moving back here. It's just, it's a lot. <laughs> I can be sure. But, I mean, I'm from New Jersey originally, so I've always idolized the New York Philharmonic. Like, that was the orchestra that I looked up to. Yeah. And I've always wanted to live in New York. And just to have the opportunity to be in such a great orchestra and be close to home at the same time because it's that's not the case very often like yeah it doesn't sometimes. happen for a lot of people they yeah, have to make the you, sacrifice of when you win a get job, a job to right. go, yeah. <laughs> but yeah so I really very very happy that I has your family come to city. see you yet yeah oh yeah. that's great that's nice <laughs> yeah you know it's yeah it's just a train ride away for them so they're very happy to have me close yeah. to home too yeah so oh that's good yeah, yeah. we're ha- happy for you that yeah, you get to have you. that um you've also mentioned that uh, you're, you know, always enjoying the idea of having a challenge to mm-hmm. work towards and you keep yourself busy. And, right. Yeah. Um, do you think that as far as auditioning and jobs go, like this is the end of the road or are you excited to start thinking about maybe some other things? I feel like you've ticked off the win a job <laughs> box, like get a, get an orchestral job. Like you've done a pretty great job of that. Yeah. Uh, done. Um, so are now you starting to think of other things in your playing you want to Absolutely. Explore? Yeah. I mean, I think that like with preparing for auditioning, like it's a lot of technical work too. Yeah. And I'm really excited to be able to explore like some creative like aspects of my playing. Again. Very true. And, yeah. yeah, I want to like get back into like the competition world. I really like competing, <laughs> <laughs> and just like chamber music. I just want to explore like all of these other things that I haven't really had the opportunity to because I've been so orchestra like audition focused. You sure. Know? Yeah. So yeah, I'm very excited to kind of branch out a little bit. And, yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people do forget that too. Is when you're so entrenched in this prep process it mm-hmm. is very technical and yeah. although you're mm-hmm. being musical and um, you're incorporating that as well it's a lot it's, of work yeah. it is mm-hmm. yeah so it's nice to have the freedom to start thinking about oh I can absolutely like, open up and have fun and, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no very excited too so after a lot of people win a big job uh, we see this here a lot they'll mm-hmm. come into the store and then they'll start shopping for a new head joint or a new sure, flute yeah. <laughs> um, because it's you know, finally I can get what I, what I've always wanted or I can start exploring yeah. new sounds sure, sure. or they need to, they feel like they need to blend. Mm-hmm. Do you have any of those feelings like wanting to blend better with the group or are you right. satisfied with your setup? I am pretty satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I mean, I play a Muramatsu nine carat flute and I, it was kind of the same process with the alto flute. Like I, played on a silver muramatsu previously and I was looking for different head joints because I really wasn't super satisfied with my playing at that time this was like maybe four or five years ago Mm -hmm. and 
I was like, oh, maybe I'll just, like, try one flute. I just, like, want to see what it's like to play, like, the gold one. Yeah. And I tried it, and it just, like, was perfect. And Everything you're looking for. Yeah, this, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've thought about it, like, here and there, and then I have some friends and colleagues who are just, like, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Stick with it. Yeah. Something's working. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with yeah. us. <laughs> um, I also noticed that when I was, you know, looking up some stuff that the the flutists of the Phil are actually gonna do a little concert a performance together in mm-hmm. December. Yeah. Um, in honor of the New York Flute Club's hundred year anniversary. Yeah. Can you tell exciting. us a little bit about that and what you guys have planned? Sure. I mean we uh, so I know they're doing a bunch of different recital programs with various like flute sections of orchestras in the city and I'm excited because it's my first time, you know, yeah. being on a recital with my Yeah, good timing colleagues. with everything. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And so we're we're putting on a recital, the four of us, Robert, Yubin, myself, and Mindy, and we're playing some chamber music of pieces that were premiered in, like for the flute club or have significant value to the flute club. And then each of us are going to play some solo pieces too. So That's really cool. Yeah, super exciting. Have I you really... decided yet what you want to do for your solo piece? Yeah, I'm going to be playing the Dagnani aria. Beautiful. So, yeah, very yeah. excited. <laughs> It'll be a great concert. Come. Yeah. <laughs> One other thing I was a little curious about was the schedule and the realities of playing in the film now mm-hmm. and um, how it might have differed from your schedule in RPO. So are you feeling like overwhelmed or is it kind of a smooth transition for you? Sure. I mean, a little bit of both. I wouldn't say overwhelmed necessarily, but um, I mean, there's a lot more concerts here. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a um, 52-week orchestra, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my it's similar in a sense that like I'm glad that I had the RPO experience before this experience because I yeah. kind of got like a it's taste like a of warm up. What, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess in a way, yeah. yeah, it's a taste of um, like what it was like to be in a professional orchestra, and it was such a great orchestra to be in. Like yeah. I really, really learned a lot from my colleagues there, and I don't think. I think if I didn't have that experience, like, I wouldn't be doing as well as I am right yeah. now in this experience. So, yeah, I sure, think everything it contributes kind of, to yeah, um, probably your confidence to going into the right, audition. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you had this as a conscious thought, but I feel like subconsciously there has to be something with people that already have a gig um, mm-hmm. going into an audition, not as much pressure on yourself. And like you were saying, right, change your yeah. mindset so that mm-hmm. it's an experience and not so much like I really need to. I need to win this because my livelihood Mm -hmm. depends on it or... For sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, I still had a little bit of that pressure because my job in Rochester was only a one-year position. Yeah. So there was that... There was that expiration. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, it was was nice to just... To have, like, something under my belt to be like, okay, like, I have this to show for, like, what I've done. But it's not necessary, of course. Yeah. I was going to say, do you think it's a huge benefit to have that real life experience and do you really think there's a substitute for it like do you really think any amount of practicing can fill the the place of just sitting in a group and just getting rehearsals under your belt and concerts uh maybe uh, i mean i think that like having a, a job is really similar to like a summer festival experience yeah. it's kind of it's funny how like in school i mean at least my experience like we would only put on like a handful of concerts yeah. a semester yeah. and you rehearse for like two, three weeks, like some days a week and then have one concert. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And now it's Not like, like the real three world. or four <laughs> rehearsals and like three concerts, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's just the schedule's kind of flipped a little bit. So that's why I say it's similar to a summer festival because that's like constantly what you're doing is rehearsing yeah. and learning more rep for the next week and... Yeah, it's about so. being efficient too, and very efficient. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's it's a trade off. I mean, in school, like you have so many other obligations to yeah. do that make yeah. you very very busy. Yeah. <laughs> but do you have time now to do some other hobbies? What are some things you're interested in outside of practicing? <laughs> it's such a funny question to me because um, I mean that's like when I've been meeting people like in whatever orchestra I'm in, they're always like, oh, like what's your hobby? And I'm just like. Do I have a hobby? <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because, like, when you're in this field, like, your hobby kind of becomes yeah. your career. Um, and I just, when I was in school, like, I just practiced. I went to class, and then, like, I went home, and I hung out with my friends. Yeah. And, like, sometimes we could, you know, go out to eat or something fun, you know. But 
God, now I need a hobby to do it. <laughs> Let's see, some other popular guest yeah. suggestions include people like jogging, yeah. meditating, yoga. These are, you know, yeah, some standards. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't have, uh, no one's taken up knitting yet here on the podcast. Okay, maybe so maybe I should try to be the first too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so. Thanks so much, Allison. It was really great getting to know you a little bit better. And Thank I'm you, sure we'll yeah. see more of you now that yeah, you're in New York absolutely, too. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> of course. Allison's first season with the New York Phil has been a whirlwind so far. She has gone on her first tour with the orchestra, is navigating the full rehearsal and concert schedule, and performs in the New York Flute Club's Flutists of the New York Philharmonic Concert. With such big life changes happening so suddenly, including a move to New York and settling into the busy routine of her new job, I was truly appreciative of Allison making the time to chat with me. On behalf of everyone at Flute Center, a big congrats to you, Allison. We are so excited to have you officially in New York, and we look forward to seeing more of you around. Thanks, Alison Fierst, for sitting down with me. This episode included her recordings of the Gobert Nocturne and Allegro Scherzando and Schumann's Three Romances. This has been an episode of Flute Unscripted. This podcast is sponsored by the Flute Center of New York. Visit our website at flutesforsale.com for the largest selection of new and pre-owned instruments. Remember to use this podcast promo code LISTEN for discounts on flutes and sheet music. Special thanks to our owner, Phil Unger, the Flute Center team, and Stefan Haskoldsen for our theme music.